What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So uh, a while ago I covered the extension Path Copy and I haven't really done much with it since. I really wanted to make a video just showing some examples and some things you need to know with how to use this extension. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting the show in the links down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I covered this extension a while ago, and uh, it was it was one of my early videos, and it was back when I was doing ratings of extensions, and probably three quarters of that video was actually a rating instead of a tutorial on how to use the extension. So I wanted to come back and make one showing a few things about the way this extension works. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this extension can be downloaded from the SketchUp extension warehouse. It's called Path Copy and it's by Rick Wilson. And so once you install that in SketchUp, you're just gonna get a little note inside extensions under path copy. And so the way this is gonna work is it's very simple. You basically have a path, you activate path copy. So I've selected the path, I've activated path copy, and I'm gonna click on an object. And when I do that, that's gonna allow me to set the distance between. So you can see how this is setting these at a distance between one foot um, of about one foot two inches wide and if I wanted to change that I could type in a value of like 12 inches or 10 inches or whatever in order to get those spaced out the way that I want. And one other trick for placing objects along paths, and I actually just found out about this today, is when you activate path copy, select your path, and then click on your object, if you type in a value of zero, it'll copy these to vertices. So so let's say for example that I do this and I activate this and I create a whole bunch of copies. Well, let's say I just want to place this along the vertices or the points basically where this line um, turns. I could type in a value of zero and you can see how this actually places these on the vertices of the object. So this can be really valuable because if you click on this line and let's say you change the number of segments to 24, so this makes this line smoother but it also creates more vertices and then you use this tool and you type in a value of zero, I know that you're gonna get 24 copies in here. So you can actually use the number of segments in your line in order to create your copies as well. That by itself is very simple, but I wanted to talk through a few of the different things that you can do um, in order to make this work a little bit better for you. So the first thing is you'll notice that I had an object already along this path. You actually don't necessarily even need that in order for this to work because basically what this does is this brings in your object based on where your component axis is. So your component axis is where um, these axes intersect inside each component. And all it does is when it splits your path up into sections, it places each one of these at a set point based on that origin or intersection point. So one thing that can make this a lot easier for you is a lot of the time when you download something from like the 3D warehouse or something like that, the object axis will look a lot more like this. So it'll be kind of off to the corner. Well, if I was to run this extension, let's go ahead and erase these out. So I select my line, extensions, path copy, click on this object. You can see how it's actually centering all of these based on the object axis right here. So just uh, one of the things that you probably should do is you should actually go into the component and set the axis where you want these to be. The other thing you could do is since I'm now inside this component, I can actually move this down so that it's centered on the origin. So you can go back in and fix it after the fact, but it's a lot easier to just set it up right when you first get started. And so another application for this, I actually got an email asking how I would place on like a piece of furniture if you had a whole bunch of little buttons or something like that that needed to go along the um, basically an offsetted perimeter of that. Well, the way that would work is I would start off and I would offset this in so that I have my path that I want to copy these along. And in this case, I'm going to talk a little bit in a second about using weld to make this a continuous path. I actually don't want to do that here because I want this to place these on the start and end point. So the second part of this is you want to make sure that your object axis is centered wherever you want this to be placed. So in this case, this is pretty close. I think I'm going to center this just a little bit more. So I'm going to move this over and I'll click out of it. So the way that that would work is 
you could come in here and you could just set the axis based on that point. Probably if I was going to do that here, I would draw a line across the base. I would find the center. And then I would just click in here to set my axis. So now, if I select my first path and then activate path copy and then click on this, you can see how it's going to place these in here based on that center intersecting axis point. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set a value of something like one inch or maybe two inches along this path. So you can see how that worked pretty well. This took these and basically placed these every two inches along this path. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, with the tool active, I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to click on this point and it's going to retain that same spacing. So I can just come in here and click on each one of these edges. and then click on the object I want to place on here. And you're going to notice that you're going to get a little bit of extra stuff in here because the spacing isn't going to be exactly right. You can just come in here and delete that out in order to basically get the spacing that you want. So you can see how that's an easy way to space things along a line. And then the last thing I want to talk about is let's say you have a road kind of like this one. Um, where I've applied a road material to the inside of it. Let's say you want some trees around the edge of this road. Well, what I've done is I've offset the edges out so that I have a path along which these trees could be created. Um, the other thing you could probably do is you could select the edges of the road and then move these objects off of their axis a little bit. But I think this way is going to be a little bit easier. Well, the problem is you can't because this is multiple line segments, if you try to do path copy along the multiple line segments, it's only going to recognize one of them, not both of them, because they're not a continuous line. So you could do what we did before, where you use a path copy once here, once here, I realize that spacing is atrocious, but that creates um, a fair amount of extra clicks. If you wanted to, you could also use the extension weld in order to uh, weld this into one continuous polyline path. Now, if you use path copy, and let's say we want 10 feet or three feet's not realistic, but we can go ahead and work with it for right now. So we'll go ahead and use weld here. So this is a continuous polyline and we'll do the same thing. We'll use path copy in order to place this along this path. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Are you using this extension? Can you think of some cool uses for this? Uh, let me know, I might be able to put them in a future video. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.